Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at replacing the SSD in a Sony VPC-Z22, or oh, sorry, Z21M9E. This is actually my personal laptop. I've had some issues with the SSD disconnecting and um, the machine blue screening because of that. So to start off with, I've got a 10p piece here. And we're just using this to undo the rubber feet that hold down the battery. You will see here in this corner there's actually one missing and I've used a regular screw for this. Um, but we just need to remove these to begin with. I've taken apart various Sony Z series laptops in the past. Uh, I own another one which I use for some other work. And I've had some customer systems in. And I have to say this is probably the easiest of them that I've had to do. Um, there's not too many screws to remove to get in on it. Uh, around the outside here we have, or for the battery here, we have two different kinds of screws normally. Um, so these four metal in the centre and the rubber coated ones in the outside. And we just need to go around these. These are a bit awkward as they're quite wide slots in them, so you can't get just a regular screwdriver into them particularly well. Hence just using the Tempe to slacken them and then the spudger to, or sorry, the pry tool to uh, twist them out. I'll probably uh, fast forward through some of this. So the back two screws here on the centre section are shorter than the front two. So just don't mix those up. I mean, it's fairly easy to uh, remember which one is which anyway, but just to be on the safe side, keep a note of it. Now with that done, we have the little section here which we can use to lift out the battery. That comes out as a single slab. Under here we have two screws, one each side that need removing. And as normal, we're just going to keep these to the top in the same kind of arrangement as we have them in the base of the laptop. We also have up the top here, a little slot as uh, a plastic piece, you can push a paper clip in this hole, but I find it easier just to, and it will release, but I find it easier to just pull it out like that. And then we have screws in the base here, here, here. One in the center here. Then we just have these two rubber caps here which need to be removed. And under each of these we have an additional screw. So we remove these. Now one thing I will say with this laptop, it does not use a traditional SATA SSD, it uses a LIF or LIF uh, socket for the SSD and also the SSD is a strange arrangement where it's actually a pair of drives in RAID. So what we're going to do is take the pry tool and run it along this front edge. That will release quite easily the battery compartment and that does not, that's actually part of the upper section of the chassis. At the minute we're just trying to release the bottom part. So by lifting and prying along here we should be able to remove that. And then same along this edge. 
So this VGA cable is actually on a ribbon cable, so we can lift and the port will twist back, but don't worry, we are not actually damaging the board in that happening. And then we want to just... And similarly, let's just release things along the back. So if we get the pry tool into the gap along here. And... Want to push back on that Ethernet port as well to clear that from the chassis, as again that's on a separate thing that will lift up. This is probably the most tricky part of the whole process, just getting everything separated. Yeah, just lifting there in the hinge to release that clip slide along the back here and then from here we can lift and out past the ethernet port we'll leave that up so we can see with that done now we have access to cooler if we wanted to uh, tamper with anything with that i believe the processor is socketed um, and we've got the main board here it's not the easiest machine to disassemble so I'm not going to go in depth taking more apart but we've got our wireless card up here but the thing we're interested in is the SSD so we have this connector here or this bracket I should say sorry so by undoing that now we'll see the caddy that it's held in is now released and this, like I say, it's a low insertion force. Do not tamper with this connector here. Instead, pull the cable round and just pull it out. Now we can remove the three screws from the base here. And we can get our replacement SSD. Sourcing the SSD I found a little bit tricky. I was able to find this one for £50 through Amazon. Uh, it's come from China. Delivery was relatively quick, actually, su surprisingly quick. I thought it would take a little longer. Um, but I will put a link in the description below along with details of the model number. And now, so if we just unscrew these three screws holding it into this base. So we can remove the old SSD from this plastic base and fit the new one in its place. Refit the screws and bracket and we are ready. And fitting the laptop back together, it's dead easy, I mean just the plastic goes on, basically the reverse of removing it. So yeah, angle the plastic on at this end first. And just slot it into place then. Finally got that screw into position. bracket reattached and then as I say for this connector simply slot it in drop the drive caddy back into position there's a little tab there that you need to get it slotted under and a post over there to locate it and we are ready to finish reassembling the laptop and we'll get a clean install of windows on it and should be good to go. One final step we have is because the SSD in this laptop is actually two separate SSDs, 64 gigs each, um, in a single combined drive, we have to go into the BIOS by pressing F2, go to advanced and say show RAID configuration. Now if we exit and save, 
press Control i when we get this screen and we want to say create raid volume we are going to create um let's just yeah volume zero raid zero which gives us no redundancy but a combined drive of as we'll see sort of 128 or 119.2 gigabytes we're just going to use the defaults here for the stripe size capacity and create volume it says any data on this disk will be erased that's absolutely fine as the disk is already blank anyway we are now going to insert our USB stick, which has the Windows 7 installer on here. Say exit. The system will now reboot. And we can also go back into the BIOS and disable showing the RAID setup for future. That just means it will boot quickly and won't need to go through, you know, won't show the status of the drive like that. But we can see here now it's starting Windows. This brings up the Windows 7 installer. And just to confirm. And now we see it shows as a single SSD rather than two drives. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out other channels on my video for more. And subscribe if you want to stay in touch with what we're doing. Thanks.